Hello third graders. Today we are going to be reading chapters 18 and 19. Around 10 o'clock p.m. It was my fault, Mel said, sobbing in Aunt Cassie's arms. They were up in their little room. Steve had cleaned and bandaged the wound on her leg. The cut wasn't so deep after all. The claw hadn't hit her muscle or bone. Mel would have a scar, but nothing like Steve's. And she didn't feel any pain. She just felt confused and angry, mostly at herself. It was her fault. That's what most people at the chalet thought. What was she doing out there? Greg had shouted. Stupid girl. Mel thought Steve, gentle, quiet Steve, was going to punch the guy. Don't you dare call her that, he hissed. This whole place. What you're doing here, it's wrong. It's a miracle that she wasn't killed. That shut Greg up. But the worst was what Mel heard as Aunt Cassie was taking her upstairs. They passed the three men Mel had seen on the porch. It was unbelievable, the mustache man had said. A girl and a grizzly. And then a porcupine scares it away? You can't make this stuff up. The men had laughed as Mel had put on a show just for them. The memory of it made Mel sob harder. Cassie held her tight, rubbing her back. Finally, Cassie pulled, Aunt Cassie pulled away and gripped Mel by the shoulders. All right, she said, that's enough. Her voice sounded stern. No more of this. It is not your fault. The people who work here have been feeding grizzly bears. How could this be your fault? But if I hadn't run off, Mel started, but Aunt Cassie cut her off. No, she said, wiping Mel's tears with a bandana. And another thing, Aunt Cassie said. She gripped Mel's chin gently but firmly and looked in her eyes. The car accident, that's not your fault either. Mel stopped crying. She stared at Cassie in surprise. Yes, Cassie said, her voice softening. I know that's what you think. I know that's why you won't talk about any of this, why you're not able to let go of that night. Mel sat back. How do you know that? Because I know, Aunt Cassie said, gripping Mel's shoulder. And maybe I would have felt the same way if I was 11 and my mother, my incredible mother, was killed before my eyes. I would have, I would want to make sense of this. I would want to know why. And maybe I would think it was better to blame myself than to think there are no there was no reason. That is that it was just an accident. Cassie gave Mel a squeeze. But it's not right. You must stop thinking this way. You know what your mother would say to you if she knew you were blaming yourself. You know what sh how mad she'd be? Mel no pictured mom, her fury temper, and to her own surprise, she let out a little laugh. Not that it was funny, but it felt good to laugh, like taking a big breath when you've been underwater for too long. A few minutes later, Steve knocked on the door, then popped his head inside. Everything okay? He asked. Cassie looked at Mel. Mel nodded. Cassie turned to Steve. It will be. Then left the next morning and were back at the cabin by three o'clock. Mel asked Cassie and Steve not to tell Pops what, he, what had happened with the grizzly. Cassie didn't approve, but Mel convinced them that it would be too much for Pops, at least right now. She promised she'd tell him and dad when they got home, the whole story. But they didn't share that Pops, with Pops, all they discovered at the Granite Park Chalet. They turned their cabin into an office for Cassie. For three days, the sound of Pops' old typewriter writer filled the cabin. The editor of National Geographic was waiting for the article. On Saturday, they all drove to town to mail it. They stood in front of the mailbox and Cassie handed the big fat envelope to Mel. You do it, she said with a smile. 
This was all your idea. Let's do it together, Mel said. They each held one side of the envelope and pushed it through the slot. They stood there for a moment and Mel felt a rush of hope. But that hope died that next day when Steve came rushing to the cabin and what he told them was more shocking than anything. Mel could have imagined and far more terrifying. Chapter 19. Sunday, August 13th, 1967, 2 p.m. When Steve first came inside, he could barely speak. He collapsed into the chair and sat there in shock. Mel, Pops, and Aunt Cassie gathered around him. Luckily, Kevin had played hard all morning and was taking a nap. Mel studied Steve's face. It was a jumble of anger and sadness. He took a deep breath. There was grisly attack last night at Granite Park at the campground below the chalet just after midnight. He spoke so quietly that they had to lean close. A 19 year old girl was killed. The grizzly dragged her from her sleeping bag. She had a friend with her, a young man. The bear beat him up, but he survived. Mel's whole body started to shake. One hour later, Steve continued, there was another attack. A second girl was killed. He swallowed and it was and it wasn't at Granite Park. Where was it? Mel asked. Trout Lake. Pops frowned. But that's at least ten miles from Granite Park. There must be a mistake. No, grizzlies can't move that fast. Steve closed his eyes and took a breath. It was a different grizzly, but son, that can't be right, Pops said. It just isn't possible. Two girls killed in one night? by two different grizzlies? I know, sir, Steve said, but it happened. It happened, I heard from the rangers today. They're hunting the grizzlies right now. Mel collapsed her hands together. She felt sick. Pop stood slowly. All right, he said, I've made a decision. We'll leave here soon as we can. It's not safe to stay. His voice cracked a little, like he'd, like when he'd hold Mel mom was gone after the crash. By Tuesday morning, they had packed up, cleaned the cabin, and loaded the car. Steve came to say goodbye to all of them. He was staying. The rangers had asked for his help. They understand that this place needs some big changes, he said. They're already starting to clean up some of the campgrounds, and they're going to do much more. So at least that's a start. But look, but look what it's took. Two poor girls, Pop said. Both girls <clears throat> were 19 and in college. They work in Glacier, just like Mom and Cassie had when they were in college. And the bears, Cassie asked. Have they found them? Granite Park. Granite Park bear was a mother with two cubs, Steve said, nodding. They've shot the bear. Her paw was completely torn up, probably from glass. <clears throat> she had to be in pain. And the other one, Pops asked, the trout lake bear? Steve looked down for a moment and Mel knew what he was going to say. It was the same bear that came here, I'm sure. Skinny, sickly, they shot it too. The bear was also suffering. Its teeth were full of glass, old, slim, of course, that bear wasn't a monster. He was just a sick animal in pain. Steve hugged them all goodbye. He said he'd visit them at home in a few weeks. And an hour later, they were pulling away from the cabin with Cassie's Volkswagen following behind. She was coming to stay with them for a week in Wisconsin. Mel learned and watched as Lake McDonald slowly disappeared until it was just a thin line of turquoise in the distance. She rolled down her window and breathed in a sweet smell of, of pine. Some birds sang out as though they were saying goodbye. Mel whispered goodbye back just in case, just in case they never came back to Glacier again. <laughs>